Hey there, Daily Dosers. My name is Jason Diaz, and I'm the worship pastor at our Rancho Bernardo campus. And I'm so thrilled to speak with you today because today we're talking about the best kind of love. We're talking about agape love. Our passage for today comes from the book of John, chapter 21. We're going to look at verses 15 through 19. And it reads like this. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then he said to Peter, feed my lambs. Jesus asked him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And then Jesus said to him, tend to my sheep. Again, he asked him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And so Peter said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not want to go. And this he said, signifying what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. In the Spanish translation of our text, the word love changes from when Jesus speaks to when Peter speaks. In the first sense, when Jesus says love, he says, mayamas, do you love me? But when Peter responds, he says, yo te quiero. And again, Jesus asks him, me amas? And Peter says, yo te quiero. And finally, Jesus just relents and he says, me quieres? And Peter responds woefully, yo te quiero. I don't think that the word Peter uses is inherently wrong. I think what's off is his understanding of the word love. You see, Jesus is trying to get him to understand this unconditional love, this special kind of love that he has for his followers, the agape love, the love that says, not only will I die for you, but I will live for you too. But you see, that requires a vulnerability. And as a man, I relate to Peter because I have that same love for, for my family for my loved ones and for God, I will do anything for you. I'll go to bat for you. I'll fight for the, the, your honor to the death. I will do that. But, but don't ask me to be vulnerable because that's, that's difficult. But I'm beginning to understand more and more about this agape love. Uh, I have seven nieces. That's right, seven. That's a lot of girls in the family. You should come to our house sometime for a Sunday night dinner. It gets very loud. I mean, you can just feel the feminine energy rising in the room. And I've learned over the years as they get older how they need to be loved. They need someone who can listen and be vulnerable and watch them do a cartwheel or take them out for Thrifty's ice cream or just sit down and pretend to have a tea party. Whatever it might be, I have to be available. I have to be present. And that can be hard sometimes. But I love them unconditionally now because I know how much they appreciate that. And I know I'll have that same love for my kids when I have them someday. It's just this unconditional love that God wants us to understand can only come from Him. And so as we dive deeper, I think it's important for us to ask ourselves what agape love looks like for us. It's one thing to be able to say, I'm willing to die for you, Lord. I'm willing to be put on trial for my faith and just go that distance. But it's a whole nother thing to say, Lord, I'm willing to live for you. I'm willing to put my life in your hands. So much so that this same love that you've shown me, I'm willing to show to others. You see, when Jesus comes back and he visits the disciples on the shore, he's redeeming Peter. And he's saying, not only am I willing to die for you and come back to life, but I'm willing to live for you. I'm willing to reconcile this relationship with you. Even though you've denied me, my love still counts. My love still exists for you. I think that's where God wants us to live. 
How are we showing agape love? Are we showing it to those who don't deserve it, to those who fall on the wrong side of the political spectrum, to those who get our blood boiling? Are we showing it to ourselves? Are we able to say that we truly are living in Christ, died to sin, and now alive in him? When we do that, when we accept Christ's love and we show it to others, that's when we fulfill our calling to love God and to love others. That's agape love in the truest sense. That's love. That's amor. That's agape, to be able to say, I love you. Yo te amo. I agape you. It's the best kind of love, and it's the love that God wants us to have. Thanks for listening, Daily Dosers. Have a great rest of your week.